Have you ever heard from someone how to properly get faked out? Or they simply tell you not to get faked out? If you bite on a shooter's pump fake, how do you simultaneously recover and at the same time stay poised to explode when the actual shot happens? Chances are you've heard many or too many approaches. That was my problem. Just wait or be more patient or stay down. I can't recall ever reading about any method or being taught anything technical on the topic growing up until I got to college where a more experienced goalie told me what to do. Here's how I go about it all. I titled this video, How to Get Faked Out. I think it's unrealistic to coach a goalie to just don't get faked out and ignore the fact that it's inevitable. If you're in any way competitive, of course you're gonna be so focused and dialed in on the shooter and the ball that you start to react and respond to ball movement. It is difficult to relax to not get faked out, but also stay activated to react fast. But there's still technique that can help. This part one video will cover just one of them. Get faked out on your legs, not your arms. That's what Marko Popovich said to me when I was struggling adjusting to higher level shooters with better pump fakes and releases. What usually happens is that goalies start to react with and on their arms. Their arms go wide, they skull heavier and deeper, they elevate too high or either hunch over or they go super stiff with a straight vertical back. The real issue with all of these elements is when the goalie tries to recover back to their proper ready position and the shooter throws the ball. The full energy for the best reaction to block the shot is totally lost. And they're either falling down, don't have their hands, or they only have their arms. It was an epiphany for me. I can disassociate my upper body from my legs reacting and get to still use my hands to assist exploding out for a lunge or any save. If you train yourself to react to pump fakes with your legs by getting your knees higher, it'll only compress you more and benefit your lunge more. Visually, it might look like there's a weight on their head because as their knees get higher and your hands aren't overused for support, it'll keep their head and their whole body down and be more patient. In fact, during intense situations for me, I often say my knees either hit or seem to get higher than my elbows in the base position. One last crucial detail, this does not mean don't use your hands or stop using your hands. Utilizing your hands to make a bigger, more explosive elevation is still important and a topic for an upcoming video. But don't suspend the usage of your hands once you get faked out and try to do everything after that with only your legs. I'll cover a few drills and other concepts soon that will help with training this. So be sure to subscribe and follow if you're finding this valuable. If you're a coach, feel free to direct message any questions you might have.